Hello everyone, this is the Diatone GTB229, featuring 1103, 10,000 kV motors, our typical 65 millimeter props on 1.5 millimeter motor shafts. Motors do have two screw holes. The flight controller is the new Mamba F411 Nano, 12 amp ESC, VTX is a TBS Unified Pro 32 Nano, and a Newbie Drone camera, Canopies by Newbie Drone 2. I'm getting just about 105 millimeters motor post to motor post. Carbon frame is 3 millimeters tall, looks like a little over 1.5 millimeters thick. It weighs a little over 45 grams. I flew it on this RDQ 2S 525 milliamp battery, which brings our all up weight to 74 grams. So this is a joint venture with Kebab, but it can be a joint venture for you too. Here's an opportunity with the prototype frame, Ditone is wanting feedback. That's why they asked me to make a video. That's why you're seeing videos on this, is they want to hear what their customers have to say. I'll give you two things to start on. One is the camera. It seems like the camera is either acceptable or not. The other thing is the canopy and the lack of adjustable camera angle. What do you think? What do you think about the flight stack? This is all still coming down the pike, so it could be a while before we see it. And there's one thing I want to point out to you in the flight footage that we're just about ready to watch. After I take off, I do a sweep around the trees real quick, and then I take off over the shed. I want you to pay particular attention to that because it's something I have not experienced in this category before. So let's go. I hope you're ready for that thrust. We're going to take a quick short lap around the yard, and then we're going to go. It's going to come as soon as we loop around this tree, and here we go. Right there. There it is. Even watching it back now... It feels like it sets me back in my chair. Go back and watch that a few more times. It's really impressive. I, I don't want to make too much out of it, but I was truly surprised by that. And it, it kind of fades as we get deeper into the battery, as the battery takes its hit as I fly through it. Uh, something else that you'll probably notice is, from time to time, I struggle to keep the nose down in this video. Uh, there's a little bit more yaw required when you have less uh, camera angle. And that's, you know, I'm used to flying at 40 to 50 degrees. And so I have to use the yaw a little bit more. So I'm a little less smooth, I think. So try not to let that sway you on the performance of the machine. You know, I did fly it a lot, but, you know, I fly a lot of other things at the same time. So those adjustments, I think you'll find, as per my usual, as we get deeper into the battery, I get a little bit better at managing that yaw and the, managing the camera angle. But I do get pretty floaty from time to time because of my lack of camera angle or keeping the nose down. But it's very agile, and I think... I'm, I'm kind of postulating here a bit, but it seems though that this whole vertical framing, I'm guessing that has to play a pretty big role in this thrust response that we're getting. It could be that we have some really special motors. And I was also a little bit surprised that we don't get any flutter out of the props until we get to the very top end of the throttle. And I didn't feel like there was a huge throttle gap up there either to where it wound up real fast. like. Sometimes we talked about in other machines of having an 80% throttle cut because there wasn't anything left in the prop at the top end. I didn't notice that, but maybe I'm not sensitive to it. But I, I felt like I hit the throttle and it climbed until it spun all the way up. And maybe it's because my punch outs are short enough to where I can't feel it. Maybe that's what it is. But I didn't notice that, and I was really surprised that we didn't get some prop deflection or deformation at the top end of the throttle when we really got up to top RPM. Uh, we probably get it a little bit, but it just wasn't very noticeable to me. I've watched this flight footage back a number of times, and I have another flight that I'll show as kind of a picture-in-picture -picture as we're talking through the quad on the desk. I do crash in that flight, and something I noticed about the crashes, and this is also a little bit peculiar, is... I didn't tend to land on top. I tend to land because I disarm real fast when I think I'm going to have a crash. And, and, you know, right after impact, I've got my disarm switch at the ready and I flick it right away. That's one of the things that I think I do that helps save me from uh, killing motors and ESCs is I quickly disarm. Now, I have the advantage if I'm flying low, so I'm not going to get tangled up high up in a tree. So depending upon where you're flying, that may or may not be a real good option for you. Uh, but I do crash and I land on the battery most of the time. So it seems to come down with that majority of the weight, the battery, hitting the deck first, which could increase its durability, or at least in my flights I found it to be landing on the battery or coming down if I hit a tree or tumbled or I, I punched out and I didn't recover well enough. Maybe I hit the ground or the grass or when I do that stretch along the back of the yard. Invariably, a few flights at the very least, one of those weeds that has grown up uh, I catch it because I do like to get low through that fence line pass. Uh, also, some people ask me about the size of the yard. It's 251 feet at the back fence line if you want to use that for some sort of way of measuring. And watch as we come in there. I just missed that post. That was amazing. 
So I had to include this flight because of that. So if I exclude the camera and canopy as our talking point, because it does sound like that's going to change. Quite frankly, they could leave this camera in for me. I like the super wide field of view, and I think the camera is pretty dang good, but I would like to see some camera angle. I know you might not feel the same. That's just my point. Make sure you're leaving your comments down below. Hopefully you're done or you've paused the video so I don't somehow uh, change how you think about the product and what needs to be changed. Uh, but let's go through a few things. I, I don't think I would recommend this antenna position for anyone. Um, you can probably see here on the back, I had a few prop strikes on my heat shrink. Not terrible. But not great. I think I probably just need to come traditionally off the arms where I have the ends of the antennas poking just outside the frame on the 45s like I traditionally do. When I was talking about maybe hacking together some camera angle, I was talking about maybe either using a longer standoff here or stacking a smaller standoff on top and then angling the whole canopy up just a touch to give me some more camera angle because as you can see there, there's not much camera angle involved. I have a concern about changing many things and increasing the weight. So it comes in at 45 grams as I have it set up with my antenna configuration i am running an xm plus in there um, i would like to see it stay there or maybe even go down so if they add a camera if is that camera going to add three to five grams if it adds five grams i would say for me and my flight style i would probably prefer to have this camera and therefore i'm kind of leaning to where if they could give us options maybe they have two different versions of these i know that probably stinks for having all the inventory they need to build them out but if we could have a version like this at one price point and a version with an, a different camera that other people might want, like the new uh, Foxier Predator or the Foxier Predator 4 Nano that I just reviewed a few days ago, that's an excellent camera. We have the Runcam Nano 2, that's a very good camera as well. But both those cameras are going to be probably double, if not three times as heavy as the camera that's currently in there. I am not a big fan of all the little rings in the stack. I would prefer to just see one soft mount because when you take these things apart, these little rings, invariably one bounces around and maybe it hits the deck and then it rolls away and you'll never find it again. I've been doing this enough to where I have extras of these, but I can see where that might be a problem. I would really prefer they go to one solid piece. I like that it's soft mounted. That's a good thing. Help get keep those micro vibrations from getting into our flight controller. Uh, but when it comes to repairs, this is kind of a pain. I think one other area of improvement, and mine might come in a little bit heavier because you can see I've added some battery pad here. And I've done that because this battery strap is, it's just too long. Um, I don't know if we need to come up with something different. I think most people are adverse to cages, so no battery tray or cage. A strap that is specially made that's a little bit shorter, I think is needed for this because it's just, it's just too long. Basically, let me put it on so you can see it. So these long narrow batteries are getting much more popular these days. And when you put these on, I, I like to make sure my batteries are secure. I don't want things wiggling around, but you can see when I get it taut. And I've got the battery uh, pad stuff on top. You can see how little battery strap, the Velcro part, is actually coming in contact. It's not terrible. You know, I didn't have any problems, but that gives you an idea of how much is, is coming in contact. I would just like to have more. I like to have this buckle way down here, and I could move that around and solve part of my own problem but it, I've tried it's a little bit of a pain and then three or four batteries later it's right back out here so I think a shorter battery strap it's a minor thing I'm being picky but it's something that I always try to bring my pickiness into the video as well I'm very curious about this carbon fiber frame I believe it's carbon fiber for all I know it could be plastic and I don't know how we can tell maybe this maybe you can see some of the edging it, it can I don't know how you manufacture this stuff uh, but I was pleased with the performance. I was pleased with the durability. Uh, I had a good time flying it. Oh, I should have shown you uh, the fact that they're using three screws around the outside edges and not the fourth. Uh, so that's a little bit of a unique design. Um, these motors, if I were building, I would definitely try these again. Uh, that would give me a better test for whether it's the ability for the props to blow thrust clean through the frame and have very little resistance from any carbon fiber, or if these motors are just super special. Now, I did fly these accidentally three or four packs on 3S. So it's possible I even damaged these motors a little bit before I thought, oh, it's not 3S, it's 2S, and I went back to 2S. But on 2S, this flies really well. I'm pretty impressed with it, but I'm reserving my 
opinion about this quad until we see what changes we had. I, I'm told that Diatone is going to be sending me um, the final version as well as some other versions of this that they have. Uh, I do appreciate them uh, including me in the testing and I think it's really valuable for our community. So make sure you're leaving your comments down below about the things that you've seen in this video, maybe other videos you've seen, and, and thumbs up other people's comments that if they match your thoughts and that will really help Diatone kind of collect that data and, and make a better quad for all of us. Something else that I think maybe you guys want, I'm, I'm a bit curious about this as well, how about something that it's bind and fly so the receiver is already in it how important is that to you now i know that they're working with newbie drone that's where they got the camera and the canopy newbie drone has receivers as well they're extra small i haven't used one i bought two of them I haven't used them yet so let me know if you've used some of the newbie drone uh, receivers i'm very curious do you suffer from range issues fail safes anything you know that we worry about receivers uh, that's valuable information for me personally and possibly for Diatone. Maybe they could partner with Newbie Drone uh, to include bind and fly versions. Because I think there are a lot of people that they would just prefer to bind the thing up and go fly it rather than spending time soldering. Because to get this in there, you do have to disassemble it a bit. Uh, you can see I've routed my antenna wires through the stack to keep things tidy. I've got a little bit of foam tape up there. And then my antenna wires go down between the ESC and the flight controller, flight controller, excuse me, and then they come out back here to my zip ties. But again, I wouldn't do it that way. I would, next time I'm going to do it off the arms. Ultimately, I'd like for them to secure the antenna somehow. We can do that ourselves, but if a canopy they were to design or to make or whatever were to kind of hold this more securely, I would like that. I don't like things wiggling around on my quads. I don't know why I'm so picky about that, but that's that's a personal nitpick of mine. If you feel the same way, let me know down in the comments section. As far as flight performance goes, I really think they're on to something here, and I'm very curious what the future brings for the developments and the final version of this. And they've got several other versions of this that they're going to be making. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned that I haven't crashed this enough in order to do a no really good job testing because I have crashed other quads and they have survived and then they get to retail and then people other people crash them and they start to have problems with the frame durability that's that's always a concern of mine is that I I didn't do enough in order to ensure that my findings are founded uh, but again I'm one guy I can't possibly put in all the flights and crashes that the uh, every everyone in the FPV community does but hopefully you've left your comment down below I've rambled on too long hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video give it a thumbs up uh, share it with others I would appreciate that and a subscription as well if you have any comments questions suggestions or otherwise please let me know in the section down below I appreciate your time and thanks for watching